Welcome back to Get Books. I'm Jennifer. I'm Kate. And we are here talking about Pride Books because it's Pride Month. So here is our new bingo. We forgot this last time, sorry about that. Um, you can see it's beautifully decorated. There are suggestions on the back. And we are talking today about graphic novels. Woohoo! So, I'll go first because I've got a bigger stack. Um, this one is Check Please. It is a sports book. Um, Biddy is not the world's biggest gym rat. Um, he's a hockey player, but he's not really that great at hockey. But he decides to try out for his college hockey team. He does get a spot, um, but what Biddy really likes to do is bake. Um, so he's a baker, and he bakes a lot for the hockey team, and he becomes really good friends with the hockey team. And that might be a little romance there because, you know, it's fun. Um, so this is book one, there is a sequel book two, and they're both really good. And don't eat this when you're hungry or you want to bake because you will bake. Sounds like eat. a really happy story. It's fun. That's great. So this also has a baking theme. It's called Bloom by Kevin Panetta and Savannah Ganesho. And it's a beautifully, um, beautifully illustrated um, story. Um, Ari um, is... This, this character here, and Ari wants to go to the big city with his friends and start a band, or they have a band, but he, he wants to have this big career as like, you know, like rock star kind of thing. And um, the thing is, is that his, he's, um, he's the son of a Greek family that owns a uh, bakery um, and that his parents started, and they rely on him. And so his father reluctantly says, yes, of course, go follow your dreams, but we have to hire somebody to replace you. And the person who ends up replacing them is Hector. Um, and Hector is in culinary school and he's just taking some time off to make some money and to take care of some family business in the area. And Hector comes to work and um, Ari has to figure out what he really wants in life. And Hector's just a great guy, and it's this sort of slow burn, friendship turns to romance, and um, I really, really like this one. It's a beautiful story. It was good. I liked it, too. Yeah. My next one is The Prince and the Dressmaker by Jen Wang. I loved this story so much, and I didn't want it to end. I still so, wanting to read it. Oh, it's really good. So Prince Sebastian has a bit of a problem. He's a prince. And his parents, of course, want him to marry, and he's just not that interested. Um, first, because he doesn't want to get married, but second, he's just not really interested in the ladies. Oh. Uh, and he has a giant secret. So, by day, he's Prince Sebastian, and by night, he's Lady, I can never pronounce this right, Crystalia. And he is a huge fashion icon and fashion stylist. And the only person who knows the secret is his, the dressmaker, who is actually turns out to be his new best friend. Um, so it's kind of the story of their friendship and how everything kind of turns out. And of course, lots of fashion. Oh, yeah, it's fun. It's great. Cool. Uh, Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me. Laura Dean. This is not a happy romance. Uh oh. Laura Dean is a bad girlfriend, and our um, our main character Freddie um, is her girlfriend, and Laura Dean keeps breaking up with her. Laura Dean is toxic, and Freddie has to learn one of those lessons that when you're in a toxic relationship, you have to, you know. So it's a story about. Um, Freddie uh, continually being reeled back in by Laura and her friendship with Doodle and um, and other friends. There's a lot of characters. Again, the artwork is really gorgeous. Um, let me see if I can find a good a panel that really shows off the artwork. See this beautiful, beautifully illustrated panel. Maybe it doesn't show on the on the screen, but um, really gorgeous artwork and a really. Um, I think important story that anyone can learn from that some relationships, no matter whether or not you love someone, are not actually worth your time um, because they are damaging. So I think it's an important lesson to get from this story, and I recommend 
uh, Laura Dean keeps breaking up with me, but like, this is, this is, this is a, has a solid good ending, but it's not a happy story. That's true. Yeah. It was really good. I like that one too. Yeah. My next one is Heartstopper. So this one is volume two. Um, we have volumes one and volume two. This is a UK story, so volume three and four are out in the UK, but we're having to wait a little bit for them, which mm. is not cool because it's always annoying. I know. <clears throat> but the happy news is this is soon to be a series on Netflix. <gasps> so, yay. Nice. So this is a story about Charlie um, and Nick. And Charlie is a runner. Um, and Nick kind of sees him running and is like, hey, maybe you want to try out for the rugby team. And he's like, yeah, maybe. Um, he does. He makes the team. He becomes friends with all these guys. But most importantly, he becomes friends with Nick. And then he's like, mm, is this a friendship? Is or is this, this something, something more? more? Is it something more? And then, you know, if it is something more, could it actually go anywhere? Because, you know, rugby guys, it's tricky. They're it's very tricky. buff. They are. Yeah. So that that's really a great story. Right. Great. So I'm going to talk about um, two books together because they... They're both doing the same thing. Um, both of them are um, interpretations of the classic novel Little Women that many of us just have loved for so long. They're my favorites. Um, and so this one is called Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, and this one is Joe, an adaptation of Little Women. Um, Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy is beautiful. It's got a lot going on in it. Their father is... Um, so the, the girls are um, uh, the... The two oldest girls, Meg and and Joe, um, were their parents were single, and their parents met and fell in love. So the father is black and the mother is white, and um, he's serving overseas in um, in the Middle East right now, and um, and the two younger girls, Beth and Amy, are the um, younger half sisters of the new marriage. Um, so it's so it's so you've got a like a blended family, you've got an interracial family, you've got a military, you know, being away in Afghanistan story. Um, it comes together really well, Aunt Calf. And so over the course of this um, story, um, Joe um, Joe comes out, and there's a bit of a coming out story. And there's a you might remember in the original Little Women there is Aunt March, who is this cranky, crabby older woman. Um, rich and she employs um, Joe to be her assistant. Well, in this book, she is Aunt Kath, and Aunt Kath is crabby and cranky, um, but ultimately supportive. And there's a really nice resolution with Aunt Kath in this book. And um, I highly recommend Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy. Um, Joe, uh, an adaptation of Little Women, sort of, um, is by Kathleen Gross. And it is um, another uh, Little Women story. The father, of course, is away, deployed. Um, so we, you know, it harkens back to the original book where the dad is away in the Civil War. And um, in both stories, their mother is a is a nurse, is a medical professional, um, and this, and also Beth. Beth, Beth doesn't die in either of these, um, which is really nice. Um, but yeah. this one is aged a little younger. The, um, the uh, Joe is an eighth grader. Um, and so over the course of the year, she figures out that she's gay and she does come out to her family. Um, she has great support. It's a good story. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful story, well told. And it's very faithful um, to that first half of, uh, actually both books are both faithful mm -hmm. to that first half of Little Women. Um, and tell that story really well. So I recommend um, Joe, um, especially for like middle school age. Yeah, I love those, but yeah. I'm also a big Little Woman fan. So yeah. I'm yeah. here for Me all too. the adaptations. Yes, I love the adaptations too. Yes. <laughs> all right, my next and last one is Kiss Number Eight. So I forget the Mads. Mads is pretty happy with life. You know, everything is going along. She's got a friend, her family is great. Uh, there's a boy next door, and he wants to kiss her, and she's like, mm, not really. She's but not she can't feeling figure it. out why she's not feeling it. And then she realizes that for kiss number eight, maybe 
should be with someone she really likes. And someone she really likes is a really close friend who's a girl. So she's oh. kind of coming to terms and figuring out her sexuality and trying to figure out if she actually really does like girls. Yes. So, kiss number eight. Kiss number eight. So there you have it. There are graphic novels for Pride Month. Yep. And we will be back next week with a new bingo square.